Someone actually asked a brilliant question, and it's a thought experiment. Kind of like the uh, disappearing uh, sun thought experiment. There's only two things in the universe, the Earth and the sun, and the sun were to instantly vanish. Since supposedly nothing propagates faster than the speed of light, why would the Earth immediately, upon the disappearance of the sun, fly off into the darkness of the universe? And that, of course, is a very interesting thought experiment. This is another one, and it's an old one. And I found another person on YouTube that tried to explain this. And the guy's got 5 million subscribers. And I nearly laughed my butt off when I saw it. But I thought the person that actually posted this comment on my channel a couple days ago was an interesting one. It was very easy to answer. And the first thing I did is I thought, well, there's got to be somebody else on YouTube that's trying to explain this. And I found somebody with 5 million subscribers. And it was completely ludicrous and ridiculous. The guy had a lot of math, but he, he messed up about a, a million ways to Sunday, and I'll tell you what he did. But it's about it, the fact that we could uh, drill a hole all the way through the Earth, which, of course, let's forget about the fact that that's completely impossible. And we could actually stick um, a, uh, a, uh, a tube from... Uh, uh, we'll have to eliminate out the Coriolis effect, so it'd have to be from pole to pole a hollow tube from uh, one side of the earth to the other and would drop some times this is about a human being falling through the earth you know what would actually happen would they fall all the way to the other side or what would happen so it doesn't matter if it's a human being or a bowling ball so it's a thought experiment so let's just suspend disbelief as far as the impossibility of doing that and of course no scientist on earth knows the absolute density of the core of the earth or the outer core and how big they are relative to each other or the density of the mantle and of course we have the crust so we can eliminate out those variables and we can actually uh, make intelligent conclusions um, based upon the nature of pressure mediation the things I've been talking about through countless thousands of videos and it is it is an interesting thought experiment um, what would actually happen when a, a bowling ball or a person makes no difference would fall through the earth? They fall away to the other side, would they go to the center and stop? You know, what would happen? And uh, understanding, uh, and by the way, I've said this countless thousands of times before, at the center of every field modality, there is not that field. At the plane of inertia, at the center of a magnet, there's no magnetism. At the center of any mass, there is no quote-unquote gravity. Of course, gravity doesn't exist. Ultimately, the phenomena, of course, is mutual mass acceleration, no different than magnetic attraction. The only distinction or differentiation, uh, the devil in the details, if you will, is in the nuance. One is point source and the other one is non-point source, mutual mass acceleration, i.e. so-called gravity. What it is is dielectric torsion. Okay, It's not the bending of space and time. Space has no properties and time is only a measure, so it's certainly not that. So we can't agree with... Uh, the idiocy of Einstein or that of uh, relativity in general, but let's first go to the mistake this person made, and this is a person with 5 million subscribers. I couldn't believe he said something this stupid, but he actually said it, and he had a lot of math, but he actually had no math for this, but he, he said it as if this were de facto the case, and I'll tell you the idiocy of it. He showed the ball or the person, I think his demonstration was a person, it makes no difference. Once he said it reached uh, a certain level of falling into the earth, um, that everything above it would not matter anymore. He said what you could do is you could eliminate out everything that is uh, bigger than this. He said his exact words were we could cancel all of this stuff out uh, around uh, the ball or the person as if we were quote-unquote shaving the earth off. In other words, everything between this green line and this red line would be eliminated and uh, it wouldn't have any effect on the falling person or ball. And that is so completely ludicrous because as you can see, you know, at this white line and everything above it, as these arrows are indicating, um, all of this is mass and matter. And of course, it is, of course, being accelerated to that just as it's falling. So it was completely, unbelievably ludicrous. The guy was de facto straight out of hand, no ifs, ands, or buts, denying that the mass now above this falling object didn't matter at all in the equation or what would happen. And this is a thought experiment, yeah? The thought exper experiments are wonderful things to think about. It actually helps you understand nature. And, of course, that's completely ludicrous. You know, that is uh, no different than saying at the one second... The, uh, the mass that's underneath the ball here, which is everything between the green line and the red line, matters. 
but the same mass between the red line and the green line when you come to the red line and just past the red line doesn't matter. And that, of course, is the most completely nonsensical poppycock and trash I could possibly imagine. Literally everything beneath the crust here, whether it be the ball or the person, uh, is the mass and matter that that uh, ball or person is uh, accelerative toward, towards. And that is correct, but to say that it is now eliminated as the ball is falling and it reaches, like, say, right about here. Well, that's completely ludicrous. The matter and mass, of course, still matters. It has always mattered since whether it be on the surface or whether it be underneath the surface in the thought experiment here. I, I nearly laughed myself to death because these are accelerative vectors in our imaginary hollow tube that passes uh, from one side of the Earth to the other. So now let's actually explain what would happen. Now, of course, we don't know the actual densities of, uh, you know, the crust and the mantle and the core and the outer core and how big they are, but we can eliminate out those variables and we can make accurate statements even though they are not ultra, ultra specific since nobody on Earth knows the densities and whatnot. So this is a thought experiment. What would happen to the ball or the person as it were to fall in this uh, tube, let's assume no friction, let's assume no, uh, uh, no air, like the air has been sucked out of this tube like a vacuum cylinder, which of course is totally impossible, but this is a thought experiment. Once the ball or person reached about terminal velocity X number of miles into the mantle, it would immediately start to decelerate. And of course it would have a, an X amount of uh, forward momentum you know, as you would see here, but I mean, these acceleration vectors towards the mass that is now above the falling object, and of course our falling object is falling towards uh, the mass, but now it actually has forward momentum, it has uh, reached past terminal velocity, but it has started to slow down. Since we don't know the densities of the core, the inner core, and the outer core, you know, we can't be hyper-specific here. But what would happen is the exact same thing you would see in a skater in a half pipe. A half pipe is just a parabola or a U-shaped ramp or a, uh, a ball on the end of a string. If you were to pull it back and let it go, it would swing as a pendulum back and forth, just as a skater who, without any added energy, were to launch himself at the top of a parabola, or what they call a half pipe, he would go up one side of the curve and down the other, and the up and down would actually uh, you know, very, very quickly get smaller and smaller and smaller until, of course, he settled at the bottom of the pressure curve. So it actually follows that uh, parabola uh, curvature of uh, diminishing returns up either side of the parabola. So our falling object would do this number. It would uh, immediately decelerate and it has X amount of uh, forward momentum which is being burned off. Okay, it wouldn't even get close to the center of the Earth in our imaginary thought experiment, which is marked here by the yellow. What would happen is this. It would actually follow this path exactly like this. Yeah, completely decelerated, and then it would accelerate back because now it's, of course, following these, uh, these vectors. And, of course, it's just simplex pressure mediation. Pressure mediation of the acceleration vectors of mutual mass acceleration of the falling object. So let's start again and uh, not stop and show how it would travel. Yeah, like this, and back up like this, and this, and this, and this. And it would get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. And uh, our ball, our person, our bowling ball, if you will, it would settle somewhere, you know. Since we don't know the densities of the inner core and outer core, okay, we can't be hyper-specific, but we can be specific about what would happen. It would settle right here. It would never... Re this guy's video, in addition to this fact, is so incredibly insane where he discounts the mass with a guy with 5 million subscribers. He literally thinks himself a physicist. He says that... The mass up here doesn't count, which I've already told you, and is, of course, completely ludicrous. He says that the uh, the mass would fall all the way through, excuse me here, would fall all the way through to the other side and decelerate and come back again. I uh, Completely ludicrous. It would not follow that at all. <laughs> it would never follow that. Forward momentum and terminal velocity, past, just past terminal velocity of the falling object in the vacuum tube, would immediately start to decelerate. It would follow this path just like this. It would do that number and it would settle right somewhere right around here. That's exactly what would happen. It would never reach the center. It would never fall through to the other side. 
So let's try that again. Our falling bowling ball or person would come down like this, immediately start to decelerate after reaching terminal velocity, because now it's accelerating towards all the vectors of the mass above it. Yes, obviously so, simplex pressure mediation. Yeah, and like this, 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 this. And then it would be stuck right there. Yeah, it would kind of jiggle around, you know, to either side. Yeah, but it would not go anywhere. It's dissipated off its forward momentum. And now it actually sits at a pressure vector because the inner core and the outer core are obviously way denser than the mantle. Obviously, so where they are and how big they are and how much more dense relative to one another, we don't know. But what we would know is that the pressure vectors of acceleration of the falling object would be such that um, the, uh, the cancellation of the forward momentum of the falling object would mean that it would arrive at a, I'm using four arrows here, okay, would arrive at a point somewhere right around here. One last arrow if you hold with me here because the acceleration vectors towards the much more dense inner core and outer core means that it is now, I'm trying to just touch, there we go, the object, it would settle right around there somewhere. Yeah, so there's the answer to the uh, person falling through the earth or the object thought experiment. Um, I can't believe that guy's got 5 million subscribers. That was the most ludicrous thing I've ever seen. I thought I would do a YouTube search. I said, someone else has tried you know, to answer this thought experiment, which is quite old. It's been around for decades. And I can't believe the guy said something so incredibly stupid over and over and over again. But that is what would happen. So I love thought experiments. And uh, this one was very easy. Uh, that other guy, I won't mention who it is, is exactly what Nikola Tesla meant when he said, someone that can think very deeply but can't think clearly. There are a lot of people out there that are like this. They will impress you with how deep they can think, but they can't think clearly at all because they don't know how anything works. They can give you the math for everything, but they can't give you the answer to anything. Descriptions also, too, are not explanations. Thank you so much for watching. Have a good day. And that was a thought experiment on the falling object through the earth.